a brief note before we get into today's video. I'm currently suffering from a nasty flu and would like to apologize ahead of time if the video is not up to my usual standard. This will likely be the only video for the week unless I post a let's play of my Thoric campaign, if I'm feeling better. The master of all magic in the Chaos Realms and beyond, Zinch and his servants are among the most powerful of its practitioners, and all who manipulate the winds of magic, be they good or evil, risk awakening Zinch's interest. Legend states that the very nature of magic derives from Zinch's form, from the many thousands of shards that were spread across the multiverse after his great battle with his brothers many eons ago. Many races have schools of magic exclusive to their kind, and the Chaos Gods are no different in this regard. Korn sees magic with disdain and refuses its use, preferring the pure brutality of martial combat. But his brothers, Nurgle, Sanesh, and Zinch, all command a law of magic that only they and their servants can wield. The law of Zinch is perhaps the most potent, though this is debated by scholars. It consists of several core spells, and a peculiar effect when spells are cast by demons in Zinch's service. On the tabletop, all of Zinch's spells use the Warp Flame special rule. At the end of each phase, any unit that suffered an unsafe wound from a spell or effect that uses this rule must make a toughness test. If the test has failed, then the unit suffers D3 wounds with no armor saves. If the test is passed, then the unit gains regeneration for the rest of the battle. So how might Warp Flame be represented in Game 3? Well, it could act in a similar fashion to a bleeding effect. So for a short duration, after the initial hit that caused the damage, the unit would take additional damage from the Warp Flame effect. We could have this be a predefined value, or it could be tied into the skills and power of the wizard that caused the damage in the first instance. It could be a nice addition for Wizards of Zinch to be able to increase the damage or the duration of the Warp Flame effect. Well, now that we know what Warp Flame is, and how I think it could operate in-game. Let's move on to the spells in the Lore of Zinch, each of which use Warp Flame. The Blue Fire of Zinch. It consumes the wizard's enemies in a ball of flame, stripping away their flesh and melting even the most well-forged steel. On the tabletop, this is a signature spell for Wizards of Zinch. It is a magic missile with a range of 24 inches and upon impact, it causes D6 hits, each with a strength of D6. Each hit uses the Warp Flame special rule when applying damage. The range of the spell could be extended to a maximum of 48 inches, at a greater casting cost. Translating this to the game is no real problem, as it would just be your standard magic missile, with the upgraded version increasing the range. The Treason of Zinch The wizard reaches into the minds of his victims, whispering words that stoke the fires of mistrust and treachery. Your classic hex spell, the Treason of Zinch, has a range of 24 inches on the tabletop. It forces the affected unit to use the lowest leadership value in the models of the unit for all leadership tests until the start of the next magic phase. It also prevents the use of leadership buffs, such as Inspiring Presence or Hold Your Ground. In-game, this could once again be represented quite easily as a simple debuff, which can be targeted on an enemy unit. I would imagine it would reduce leadership across the unit and have the unit ignore Lord abilities, such as Hold Your Ground. Its upgraded version can have a longer reach, but perhaps more fitting would be a greater leadership reduction or prolonged duration. The Pink Fire of Zinch A roiling tide of energy that consumes the caster's foes in a magical pink flame. This is a direct damage spell that uses the teardrop template on the tabletop. 
all models that are hit by the template suffer a d6 strength hit using the Warp Flame special rule. A standard cone attack which expands as it moves away from the caster. This could be represented in game as a moderate damage dealer. The upgraded version could benefit from additional damage. There's not really much more to say about how this spell might operate. The Bolt of Change A crackling bolt of energy that penetrates ranks of enemies and causes their bodies to instantly mutate in sickening ways. On the tabletop, this is a magic missile that has the added ability to penetrate through several ranks. It has a range of 24 inches, inflicting d6 plus 4 strength hits, using multiple wounds and warp flame special rules. Armor saves are not permitted for the Bolt of Change. This spell could once again be represented as a magic missile, but it would be more powerful than the Blue Flame of Zinch, and have the ability to penetrate multiple models. Alongside the direct damage, I would imagine some form of debuff to leadership or vigor. The spell could even cause fear among those within an area around its victims. Glean Magic the caster enters his foe's mind and steals their magical abilities from within. On the tabletop, Glean Magic is a direct damage spell that targets a single enemy wizard within 18 inches of the caster. Both caster and target roll a d6 and add their wizard level to the score. If the target's total is greater than the caster's, then the spell fails to penetrate their mind and nothing happens. However, if the scores are even, or the caster's score is higher, then the target suffers a strength 3 hit with the Warp Flame special rule. The enemy spellcaster will also lose a level and have one spell removed at random. The caster gains the spell for their own use if they don't already know it. Here we have a spell that could be unique for Zinsis faction if we include the mechanic to steal spells from enemy casters. It will give an interesting flavor to the wizards who serve him if they could specialize in disrupting the magic of his enemies, robbing them of their abilities in battle, and with more powerful wizards, even draining enemy winds of magic on the campaign. Zinch's Firestorm A searing ball of flame swirls around the caster before tearing a path toward the enemy engulfing regiments with bale fire. A direct damage spell, Zinch's Firestorm uses the Vortex template on the tabletop. It can be placed anywhere within 30 inches of the caster. All models hit by the template suffer a strength d6 hit using the Warp Flame special rule. The wizard can use the larger Vortex template at a greater casting cost. To me, this spell sounds like it would work in a similar fashion to Burning Head from the Lore of Fire, forging a path of destruction across the battlefield. Not really much more to say than that. Infernal Gateway A portal is opened to the Realm of Chaos that sucks all unfortunate souls within range into oblivion. The Infernal Gateway is a direct damage spell on the tabletop which has a range of 24 inches. The target suffers 2d6 strength, 2d6 hits, with the Warp Flame special rule. When rolling for the strength, if an 11 or 12 is rolled, then a value of 10 is used, but the hits change from 2d6 to 3d6. Infernal Gateway sounds like Pit of Shades by another name, as it sucks models into another realm. This, alongside Zietz's Firestorm, could be the major damage dealing spell in Zietz's arsenal, and could be upgraded to cover a larger area or last longer, causing more overall damage. In the 8th edition army book for the Demons of Chaos, the lore of Zietz comes with an additional attribute that would be cool to see implemented as a battle mechanic for Zietz. When a demon casts a spell from the lore, that causes unsaved wounds, then pink horrors or screamers begin to appear on the battlefield. 
being added to existing units of their kind if possible. For Game 3, this could be adapted to act like the Tomb King's battle mechanic. We can have a bar that is filled as the Zinch player casts spells, expending Winds of Magic, and as more magical energy is spent, more bonuses are applied to pink horrors and screamers on the battlefield. The final milestone could see a unit of screamers spawned onto the battlefield just like the Tomb King's Ushabti. Food for thought, perhaps. So there we have a brief look at the lore of Zinch and its related effects, and how they could be implemented in Warhammer 3. Now, if you enjoyed this brief video, please leave a like or sub. If not, then why not tell me why in the comments. Now before I go, it's time to announce the results for last Wednesday's Guess Who community post. Each Wednesday, I'm posting images of characters or units from Warhammer 2 in silhouette, and the community can choose to test their knowledge. Those who figure out who or what the images are, get a shout out in the video the following Monday. So to today's results. First, we have one half of the intrepid duo, Gotrex and Felix. Second is an unflattering view of the Beastman Giant. And third is the ponytail of a high Beastmaster of the Dark Elves. Congratulations to Sam Cadwallader and to the Harim Grebdul, who both guessed correctly. Thanks to those who participated and took the time to respond. This video was brought to you with the aid of my patrons. Thanks to Hot Apple Pie, Alexander, and Solarith Magnetar. I'm Grey Tiger. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.